Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Good heavens, what is this, CS? I hear you cry. Mullard? Is this 1975? Well, it could be. Um, don't get to see this sort of thing very often, so I thought it was worth uh, just recording this, because this is a bit of radio history, really. It's new old stock uh, uh, tube, or valve. Um, Type 807, probably the most common used, commonly used uh, beam tetrode in, uh, in small radio transmitters and audio amplifiers. Um, I think uh, and probably every single radio ham that would have built a, built a HF uh, transmitter in the 70s would have used at least one 807, probably more. And certainly uh, all, the, uh, all the small pirate radio stations that used to uh, uh, used to be run by these spotty oiks sitting in hot attics building transmitters, bashing out sheets of aluminium and uh, building transmitters so they could talk to similarly minded spotty oiks uh, would have been using 807s. Um, so uh, the, these these tubes, these valves, are uh, really a piece of uh, piece of radio history, and I think uh, I think uh, I think it's worth recording a little bit about them. So the 807, um, can't remember what you get out of these things now, 50, 60 watts I think. Well, what's it look like in the box before I take it out? Look at that. That is as snug as a bug in a rug. You just don't see packaging like that anymore, do you? I would say this is probably, I'd guess this was, I would say this is from the mid 70s, I reckon this. It might be from the 60s, it's new old stock. Big staples in the box there, look at that, you don't see packaging like that anymore, do you? Uh, pin configuration on these, as you can see, there's uh, there's five pins on the bottom. That's a UX5 configuration, so the valve base for these is a UX5. I can't remember what the pins are off the top of my head, I'd have to look up the spec, but the bottom two I, I remember are the heaters. And then you've got uh, grid one and grid two, and I think there's one pin not used, because this is a beam tetrode, which means it has beam forming plates in it. Um, what the beam forming plates do is uh, pretty much as described. They form the uh, they form the electron flow from the cathode to the anode into a precise beam. Uh, now, let's take it out of the. Uh, I'll tell you what. There's look at that wool. There's so much wool in this box. I reckon that when I take the valve out, there'll be a couple of beady eyes looking at me. Oh no, maybe not the uh, entire sheep in there. Right, so here we go. Brand new. Look at that. You can see that's never even had the. I might have had the heaters on actually. But uh, that's never been run. That is just. Uh, the writing on that is just so white. Mullard 807. Very well respected uh, valve company, Mullard. I don't think they're still going actually. I don't there's many people making tubes these days. Valves. Made in Great Britain. Okay, there we go. So I'll just put that over to one side and I'll put the 807 down. There we go. And then I'll put my hand next to it. So you get, get an idea how big it is. So it's not huge, um, but it's a nice sized valve. You know, this, you've got a couple of these running in a little transmitter. And it looks like radio. It looks uh, it looks nice. Okay, so I'll just get the board, uh, B O R E D, and uh, I'll just uh, do a bit of doodling. Now, actually, let's pan out a bit. My usual uh, usual amount of prep, which is zero. As you can probably tell, there we go. Is the board won't pan out anymore? No, it won't. Okay, I'm going to try an experiment. Now, I've noticed that the focus varies a lot when I do these. So, what I'm going to do, there we go, I'm just going to try drawing a target on the board and just see if that will help hold the focus. Now, a symbol for uh, a beam tetrode is, there's the anode, a 
There's the cathode. There's the screen grid. There's the control grid. And you have beam forming plates like that. Now that's a symbol, that's the proper symbol for a beam tetrode. And these are connected inside the valve. The beam forming plates are connected inside the valve to the cathode. So the beam forming plates are always at the same potential as the cathode. It's not a separate pin on the 807. If, uh, if that, pardon me, if that was on a separate pin, uh, you could run these as ground, use those in a grounded grid type configuration, but because the beam, the beam forming plates are connected inside the tube to the cathode, you can't, uh, you, you can't actually run them like that. Now, uh, because this looks a little messy, you know, drawing these lines from the beam forming plates down to the cathode, beam tetrodes like the 807 and KT88, KT66, they're generally not drawn with the beam plates um, actually shown. If you look up symbol for, uh, or schematic symbol for beam tetrode, it will show you the beam forming plates. If you look at a lot of circuit diagrams that uh, use 807s and use KT88s and KT66s etc, it won't show you the beam forming plates simply because it's not really worth drawing them in there. As I say, you can't uh, connect the beam forming plates to anything uh, because they're permanently connected to the cathode inside the tube. Right, now, as one of the fellows at work is going to be building a, uh, a linear amp with a pair of 807s. What he actually said was he wanted a... Oh, come on, focus. Come on, come on. Focus, please. Bloody autofocus. Come on. It's not going to do it, is it? Focus. Okay. So much for my uh, target idea. Well, I'll try anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll see how it goes. So, what he said was he wants a. Uh, he, he wants. Um, uh, he wants a linear that will provide about 100 watts because he's got an MFJ uh, tuner and tenor matcher that's rated at 100 watts, so he doesn't want any more than 100 watts. Uh, and he wants this amplifier to be able to produce 100 watts from 5 watts of drive because he's got an FT817 and he wants it to look like radio, he wants to use tubes so he doesn't want to, he's not interested in making a solid state one. So I thought right okay, a couple of 807s would be absolutely ideal for that um, they would uh, they give a nice uh, comfortable 100 watts with 5 watts of drive um, so um, let's have a look and see what would be inside what would what would the circuit diagram look like It'd be pretty simple so let's hope this bloody thing stays in focus you'd have a HT of about 750 volts that would be plus and we can't see that. So much for the prep, eh? Yep. Okay, so where can we see it? See it here? Okay. So we'd have HT line, 750 volts. Uh, because it's only 750 volts, wouldn't really worry about metering the anode current um, via the cathode. Uh, just meter it here. So we'd have uh, decoupling. That'd be a 0.01. Have uh, the meter showing the anode current going down to an RF choke. Uh, that will be. Decoupled again. How's that looking so far? That looks alright. And then we would have uh, that would go off to our tank circuit. Down here we would have a couple of 47 ohm resistors. 
and that would have half a dozen turns of 20 gauge wire wound over them then we'll go down to the valve anodes like that okay so far so good now remember I'm not going to draw the beam forming plates we just uh, we just take it for granted they're in there there's one of our 807s and there's another one now I've got it to my immediate right is the tripod so I'm sort of drawing diagonally across here I can't get in the right position to draw over here if you see what I mean okay so there's the screen grids there's the input grids and there's the cathodes so cathodes connected together that would be our zero volt rail or our negative of our supply it's ground that's positive of the supply like that now the screen grids would be connected together like that uh, actually the easiest way to do this would be to yeah I'll show the I'll show the screen voltage here I'll go in through something like a 100 ohm that would be decoupled 0.01 that would be plus 300 volts like that <clears throat> and I've drawn it like that just to save drawing this going up here and over here and round there and probably want to decouple that as well uh, so each screen grid would have a decoupling cap to ground if you see what I mean uh, this is just a simple simpler way of drawing it without having too many lines on there so same thing for the control grids they'd be connected together cathodes go to ground and uh, similarly I'll draw the uh, draw the control grid uh, on that side rather than draw it going from here you know down here and across here and up there so control grids are connected together that's that point there is that point there that point there is that point there and that would go to a uh, 50 ohm 10 watt resistor which will go off to our negative bias which is sort of neg, I don't know, 30 to neg 50 volts probably uh, negative, uh, negative bias that will be a 50 ohm resistor at about 10 watts because what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to connect the FT817 in here so the FT817 that's 0.01 decoupling there 0.01 these capacitors here are short as far as the RF is concerned so when, the, when you connect the 817 here it sees this 50 ohm load uh, we put the uh, appropriate bias in on the valves that will go to the wiper of a pot which will go off to our negative supply so we can adjust that for the correct uh, quiescent anode current uh, the output stage would be uh, just a tank circuit standard uh, standard pi tank circuit so that come along there go to a pi tank coil that would go out to the antenna on this side we would have uh, a plate tune so that would be plate tune that would be plate load they are connected to the chassis that'd be variable this would be switchable I'll show it as I'll show that as being variable to um, because it's easier than drawing a switch in but if you can imagine you know the having a switch going from uh, from one side and it will just switch out parts of the coil you don't need for different bands and across here just to be on the safe side have another RF choke 
say 2.5 millihenry. And what that what this does is, if this capacitor goes short, it just uh, blows the HT fuse, so there's no high, no high voltage can get onto the antenna. And really, that's all there is to uh, that, that's all there is to the amplifier. So that with uh, five watts of drive should give us uh, easily 100 watts uh, 100 watts output. Uh, nice, uh, really nice, simple circuit that will uh, tick all the boxes. It will look like radio. It will provide 100 watts. Uh, and it will do that from 5 watts of drive and if you wanted to um, make this uh, you know 200 watts or 300 watts or whatever you could just put another two uh, 807's in parallel or another two 807's in parallel so you could have four or six you'd have to put the um, uh, the anode parasitic suppressors in so 47 ohm resistors with half a dozen turns of 20 gauge across the top on the other valves um, you probably wouldn't need any grid equalising components. Um, if you did, just a 47 ohm, you know, to each grid. So 47 ohm there, 47 ohm there, 47 ohm there, 47 ohm there. But personally, I'd try it without them first, because I'm a great believer in uh, minimalism. You know, if you don't, if the thing will run without a component, if it will run correctly without a component, then why fit the component? It's only something else to go wrong. So. Um, uh, so there we go, and uh, they're really great, uh, great old tubes. Very versatile. You can use them for audio. You can use them for RF. I think they give full output power up to about 30 megs. It's a very long time since I've looked at the specification for uh, 807s, but um, I've certainly used many of them in the past, and I've used pairs, you know, multiple pairs in parallel, series modulated them, um, screen grid modulated them. Um, as well as high-level modulation, choke modulation. You know, I've, I've done pretty much uh, uh, everything you can with these uh, with these 807s. Use them in push-pull and audio amplifiers and in modulators. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, had a lot of fun with these things uh, uh, quite some time ago. Uh, great, uh, great old tubes. So there we go. A uh, a tribute to the uh, a tribute to the venerable 807 beam power tetrode and uh, an old school way of generating uh, 100 watts so uh, this uh, um, this thing here is going to be built um, not by me but uh, I'll uh, I'll let you know how it goes and I will be in a position to be able to uh, uh, film it um, uh, being fired up and operating so I'm quite looking forward to uh, Quite looking forward to seeing that. Okay, well I hope you found that interesting. It's very old school, I know. But uh, there are still uh, quite a few people out there that like this old school stuff. So this is the old, the old school way of getting 100 watts uh, from 5. Okay, well I hope, uh, hope you found that interesting. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time.